Hi everybody, Matthew Turnage here. Well, if you're like me, I know you're getting real excited for the new Let It Be anniversary box set. But before that comes out, I didn't want to let a, uh, another Beatle-related uh, release slip by without uh, commenting on it. Uh, just last week, I got this book in. It's uh, The Beatles' uh, Magical Mystery Tour in Yellow Submarine. Uh, compiled by Bruce Spizer. This is the latest in his series of uh, of uh, the Beatle album series of books that he's been doing. And uh, and like I said, I just got in last week. It's been a busy time at work, so I haven't had a chance to read a whole lot of it. But I did want to make sure everybody knew that this book is out. And if you're not familiar with this series, I also want to talk a little bit about this series of books. Uh, this is the fifth one he's put out. And uh, he started the series in 2017 with uh, uh, the Beatles and Sgt. Pepper, a fan perspective. And, uh, of course, this came out for the 50th anniversary of Sgt. Pepper and uh, time to coincide with the release of that box set. And then, so, similarly, in 2018, we had uh, the Beatles' Wine Album and the launch of Apple. Um, again, time to... Released with that uh, set uh, in the 50th anniversary of uh, the White Album in 2018. Third book, 2019, The Beatles Get Back to Abbey Road, and that uh, coincided with the release of that set. And then last year, he put out The Beatles Finally Let It Be, which was supposed to be out uh, along with that box set, but of course we know it got delayed. And um, so Bruce has uh, prepared an addendum to the uh, the book that will be released uh, uh, digitally and in print through his website. Uh, if you've bought the Let It Be book, that'll be out in December, he's recently said, and it'll cover the, um, the Let It Be box set and the Peter Jackson Get Back film. But just a brief overview of what this series is like. Um, this is really a great series for getting a history on each of the albums and not just a history in terms of here's what the Beatles did and, and, and that sort of thing. It's uh, It gives you the fans' perspective. So each uh, in the first four books, they begin with the uh, U.S. perspective. And in those sections, uh, just to give you an idea... Um, so you see that in the Abbey Road book, the first chapter is uh, from Tucson, Arizona to Abbey Road, an American perspective of the Beatles in 1969. So just covering 1969, talking about uh, the releases and, uh, and the press coverage especially. It covers major press articles and shows clippings of things like TV Guide's coverage of the, uh, of the rooftop concert, um, you know, uh, advertisements for uh, for the Get Back single, that sort of thing. Um, uh, letters and things like that, uh, promotional items, and and gives you it from that perspective, from the uh, the perspective of what the contemporaneous news articles were saying about what the Beatles were doing at the time, as they built up to each new release. And then he would follow the U.S. Uh, chapter with uh, the English perspective, so going through what the English press was covering and what they were saying at the time as those projects were in development and release. And then also the Canadian perspective uh, is always provided. And then uh, then other things that are really, really neat about it are um, you get into uh, coverage of what was happening in, uh, in the world at the time. So here's from the White album book 1968 you say you want a revolution so you know major uh world events that were happening in 1968 uh are covered to give you a little historical context for each album what was happening uh and then also uh the fan recollections these are always really fun uh he gets fans to write in with their memories of the albums uh, whether they were uh, memories of the album from their initial release or when they encountered them, you know, years or decades later. Um, also, uh, one of the uh, 
major sections is he, he gives details on all the the recordings. So that's that's how the series has been progressing. With this book, uh, it's a little bit different. With this book, he begins with the uh, British perspective and then has the American perspective second, and uh, and that's because the uh, you know the Magical Mystery Tour as uh, as originally conceived by the Beatles was a double EP release, and and of course Capitol Records said, look, EPs don't do anything over here. We need an album, and so they prepared the album version with the 1967 singles comprising side two. Um, so he took that approach and he mentions also in his foreword that um, that his original plan for what was going to be the fifth book in the series was going to be another album. And if, uh, if you subscribe to Bruce's newsletter, you know that he did request fans' uh, recollections of help. So uh, presumably that was the one he originally planned. He said due to the pandemic, though, he... Um, he needed to do a book that he could uh, research without traveling and a uh, magical mystery tour in Yellow Submarine. He decided fit the bill best to combine them into one uh, project since they were both sort of recorded in similar time frames. Basically what this book really covers is the period between Sergeant Pepper and uh, the Beatles trip to India uh, because pretty much all the songs from magical mystery tour and uh, Yellow Submarine were recorded in that period. Uh, so he gives us, uh, he gives us uh, the British perspective, the American perspective, and again we get the Canadian perspective. Um, there's also some other interesting articles in here, um, like a, here's an article on the Beatles and the Stones, kind of looking at them. And of course he gets into the films also, Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine. And since Yellow Submarine's being covered, he also covers the Beatles Saturday morning cartoons in this book. And of course, uh, we have the usual uh, fan recollections section. And uh, in the back, we have also um, all the, uh, the information on the sessions. And other things, too, in this book. Uh, the one thing that this book doesn't have that the previous ones had that I really liked was the historical context. And uh, as I said, with the previous books, um, you know, this kind of slots in in terms of the Beatles recording chronology between Sgt. Pepper and uh, the White Album. So he's already really covered 1967's historical perspective in the Sgt. Pepper book and 1968 in the White Album book. So it would really be a bit of a, a repeat to bring it back here. So that gets left out in favor of some other material. But since he is covering uh, two films and the related tracks recorded on them, I think that's fair. Um, like I said, I'm not very far into reading this yet, but I've, I've kind of flipped through it and gotten a good feel for it. It looks like a great book and a great continuation of the series. Uh, Bruce does say that the series is going to continue on. As I said, he kind of hinted that help was in the pipeline at one point uh, before he had to switch gears. Um, so I'm sure, I don't know, that may not be next. He may go another direction, but he does seem to indicate that he's going to continue on the series following uh, the UK albums and that the, uh, the format with this one where we get the British perspective and then the American perspective will continue. And I can certainly see... Uh, seeing a lot of interesting things in future books in the series. Uh, you figure with help, um, of course, he'll have the British album, and then from the U.S. perspective, it'll be the U.S. soundtrack, and I could easily imagine he would cover something like Beatles 6 that has a few help tracks on it, and um, and uh, maybe even, you know, touch on things like the, uh, the Yesterday single and stuff that happened from the U.S. perspective. And that could be, the same thing can be done with other albums. Of course, Please Please Me, he could talk about, uh, from the U.S. point of view, introducing the Beatles and the early Beatles um, with the Beatles would have uh, Meet the Beatles and the Beatles' second album. So I think there's a lot of great things that he can do with the rest of this series uh, from both the U.S. and the U.K. perspectives. Um, Bruce Spizer's books are always great. I recommend them uh, in this album series. 
uh, certainly if you uh, if you want to get an in-depth look at the album from a more fan oriented perspective uh, again the uh, w these articles that he has on the US and the UK perspective and the Canadian perspective are all talking about how the fans experienced so the things that they were reading in contemporaneous newspapers at the time how the information was broken to them that way and uh, including showing uh, press clippings and things where you can read the original articles for yourselves in some of the cases. And, uh, and of course, also the historical background and everything. It's just a, a, a great way to, especially for a fan like me who was not around uh, during the 60s, a great way to sort of immerse yourself in what it was like at the time as these albums were being released. And also a lot of great uh, just background information on the albums, the recordings, and and that whole process. So definitely uh, recommend the whole series um, if you uh, if you haven't uh, gotten into it. And if you have uh, been buying the series, uh, be sure you grab the new book, uh, Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine. They're great reads, uh, about 200 pages each, nice hardcover books. Uh, you can't go wrong. Thanks for watching.